When you hear the name Harley Davidson, what's the first image that comes to mind? The open road? A roaring motorbike? A fat bearded dude with an American flag bandana and a dirty leather jacket? Or maybe a trim baby boomer, VP of accounting, living out that late midlife crisis, cruising the outer suburbs in a shiny new pair of chaps? Jokes aside, these gross generalizations represent both Harley's greatest strength and biggest challenges as one of the most iconic American brands of the last century. And with sales slumping by almost 25% from last year, the motorcycle giant needs to innovate if it's going to rally new riders. Started in 1903, when childhood friends William S. Harley and Arthur Davidson started building small engines in a shed in Davidson's backyard, things kicked into high gear when the U.S. military bought more than 20,000 Harley motorcycles for the First World War. For World War II, the company made more than 90,000 motorcycles. But it was in post-war America that the modern Harley-Davidson brand was truly born. The rise of American biker culture, with all the pop connotations of freedom and outlaws thanks to film, TV, and the proliferation of motorcycle clubs and gangs, became synonymous with Harley-Davidson. Bill Davidson, great-grandson of founder William Davidson, has been running the Harley-Davidson Museum at the company's Milwaukee headquarters since 2010. This philosophy of we are going to be close to our customers in everything we do was implemented at a very, very early stage of the business. Those legendary, iconic philosophies and approaches to business is truly what has strengthened our brand over time. What also happens over time is that some heritage brands start to feel, well, old. The same style and functional changes we've seen over the years in the auto industry, from yacht-sized sedans to SUV fever to today's obsession with fuel efficiency, hasn't generally been reflected in Harley-Davidson's motorcycle offerings. Part of that is obviously due to an if-it-ain't-broke approach. There's a reason people love Harleys. But the company has also been accused of not evolving fast enough to attract younger riders. Davidson sees that perception changing in recent years, with the company's push into new categories of motorcycle. I am probably the most excited I have ever been about our future opportunity. We have a brand that is recognized around the world, whether you're a rider or you're not a rider. We're right up there with the Coca-Colas, the Microsofts, the Apples of the world. Things like electric motorcycles, um, the Livewire, which we just announced, adventure touring bikes, street fighter bikes that we're coming out with. These are categories that we really have not played in in the past, so it's kind of interesting. We've been there, but we haven't. It's more than interesting. It's crucial that the brand diversify its products and approach to younger riders. Harley-Davidson's stock has been on a steady decline recently, down by about 50% in the last five years. But the company hasn't been sitting on its handlebars. It's launched a strategic plan to lure 2 million riders to the brand over the next decade, with efforts like opening riding schools across the country and products like the Livewire. It's also been sponsoring things like X Games and aligning with pro skateboarders to help skew its outlaw image younger. Heather Malinchek is Harley-Davidson's chief marketing officer and knows the scope of the company's challenge. I think the, the challenge for us is relevance, and I think it's not just relevance of the brand, but relevance of the sport, the motorcycling in general. So we have to make sure that people can understand what role motorcycling can play in their lives, and then importantly, why Harley-Davidson is the brand that they should uh, associate with. You know, we have a vast uh, customer base, a very passionate loyal customers who are emotionally invested in this brand and do uh, and do their part to inspire new people to come into the sport. While it can be criticized for taking a while, it's clear Harley is all in on using its iconic image to attract new fanatics. It's also done work with its marketing to broaden the definition of what a supposed typical Harley rider might look like. In 2017, the brand teamed with celebrities like Ludacris, Jason Momoa, and country star Brantley Gilbert for an Instagram campaign that also enlisted a select list of influencers. That drove more than 62 million engagements for the brand. And according to CEO Matthew Levitich, boosted media value by 80%. Breaking through some of those stereotypes is important for us to do. And um, the work that we have been doing to show relevance in places that are relevant to that audience have been really successful for us. So certainly a move to more of an influencer-based marketing approach 
Uh, digital obviously is playing a huge role in everything that we're doing today. We have a very high awareness of this brand around the world, but we have people who are not necessarily thinking about motorcycling. So we're using the digital space to help us to reach out beyond our, our own channels and really going where customers are. It's not just about Harley, it's about it's about the sport. And as an industry, we have an obligation to, to build that relevance and get people. We, had, we don't have as many people these days growing up on two wheels. And so we have to work a little harder to, to get them to understand the, the freedom we can feel. That's the key. The brand was able to do it for generations before. And now that it's more focused on the road ahead, both in its products and its marketing, the hope is that this is a classic American brand that won't be left in the rearview mirror.